Even the Institute for Fiscal Studies, Mr Osborne, releasing its proper sort of uh, consideration at, at lunchtime today, but talking to the boss yesterday here on Sky News, he said, you're taking a pretty big bet with this living wage idea. Well, I think what this budget offers is a new contract with the country. It says to businesses, we're going to cut your taxes, but you have to pay higher salaries. Uh, it says to people, we're going to make sure you get a proper wage, a national living wage, but there are going to be less benefits. And it says to the country, we're going to spend less, but we're going to live within our means and have economic security. And I think that new contract, that new centre of British politics, is going to be a settlement that the country are happy with. But there is concern that a living wage is going to cause uh, a certain amount of unemployment, isn't there? I mean, how, how do you hope that's going to be balanced out? Well, we have an independent body called the Office for Budget Responsibility. They knew about this announcement in advance because I told them. They ran the numbers and what they said is that the national living wage would mean there were 60,000 fewer jobs, but there would be a million more jobs because of the other measures in the budget and the strength of the economy. So you take those two things together and you've got a big increase in the number of jobs in the country. And of course you've also got a big pay rise for people on the lowest pay. And I think that is a fair settlement for Britain. Uh, how are companies going to pay for this though? I mean, th there is a fear uh, and a, a realistic one that you know, a, a lot of the extra money for these higher wages would come from higher prices rather than coming out of profit. Well, I cut business taxes yesterday. So I cut the rate of corporation tax to 18%. I said to many small companies, you're going to have uh, less national insurance with a new employment allowance. So what I did was offer a balanced package and I think that's important for people to realize that's why it's a conservative budget it's not just that we have a national living wage it's also that we have a welfare system that's more affordable we have lower business taxes and we're cutting personal taxes too so you've got to put the whole thing together and that's why it offers economic security to working people why are the young so targeted in this budget? Uh, housing benefits for under 21s gone, student maintenance grants gone, and no living wage. I mean, everyone's talking uh, from, your, from your side on the, the benefits of a living wage. Not going to apply to anybody under the age of 25. Why not? Well, first of all, I don't accept that uh, we're targeting young people. This is all about, if you saw my budget, investing in apprenticeships, in universities. You know, here I am in Lancashire. This company has just announced it's going to hire 2,000 more apprentices. And it's all about giving young people opportunities in life. But you're right, I am saying, look, I'm sorry, you can't come out of school, go straight on to benefits, claim housing benefit. That's not what a working young person is able to do in the sense that they often have to stay at home while they uh, build their career. So we are asking young people to earn or learn rather than sit on benefits. I personally think that's good for them. It's certainly good for the country. What about small businesses and all this? You talked about some of the benefits to business, but actually small businesses are the, the backbone of the economy, aren't they? We've been told that they were the people who were going to bring us out of recession, and certainly they seem to have done that. They're going to struggle with a lot of these changes. There, there can't be any doubt about that. Well, actually, uh, what I did yesterday was cut taxes for small businesses. I cut the tax they pay on the profits they make to 18%. I cut the national insurance bill they pay so that if you employ four people full-time on this new national living wage, you don't pay any national insurance at all. If they invest in the future of their company, I also cut their taxes. And that's why it's important to make this point. The budget is a package. It, it has a national living wage, but it's also a package of much lower taxes for business and indeed in every budget in recent years I've been able to cut taxes for business, make Britain the most competitive place to build your firm, uh, make sure the country has economic stability uh, and that's the new contract with the country. Yes, uh, higher wages but lower welfare and lower taxes too. You talk about a package and, and perhaps you know, people would, would think they could look at that in terms of saying um, 
you know, we're going to lose on some tax credits, we're going to lose out partly because of universal credit, but we're going to get uh, a, a higher living wage as a result and it will balance out. But some figures from the SMT this morning, and uh, we, we can't verify them ourselves, but they say 800,000 families will lose out as a result of these welfare changes, mainly from losing tax credits, because once you, you take into account what people are going to be paying in terms of national insurance and income tax and everything else, even, even on the, the living wage, it's just not going to balance out for them. Well, it's very clear that if you're a typical family and you're working full-time on the current minimum wage, you are going to be better off as a result of this budget over the coming years. You're going to see a £5,000 increase in your pay, and that more than offsets anything you might lose because we've had to make savings in benefits. Uh, so uh, that's what we're doing. We're, we're supporting work. We're rewarding work. Of course I've had to make savings in welfare. That's self-evident. That was an important part of the budget. But that's so we create a welfare system the country can afford. And I would say the entire country is better off because we live within our means. We have a welfare system that's sustainable and can support those most in need. Uh, so uh, absolutely, this is, a, this is a budget that is on the side of working people. And I make no apologies for that. Um we heard for a long time, I mean, well, since 2010, since pre-2010, that it had to be, um, to, to get out of the mess we were in, it had to be a sort of hard and fast uh, result that we were looking for. Painful cuts, pain for a lot of people, but it was going to get us out of the situation faster. The Labour Party always said, you know, cuts have to be made, but we can do it over a, a longer period of time, slow the pace. You said fix the roof while the sun is shining. I mean, you've said yesterday you're going to take a lot longer to fix that roof, haven't you? Aren't you, in a sense, adopting, at least to a degree, what the Labour Party was saying in the last Parliament? Well, I don't think so. I mean, the Labour Party wanted to spend vast more sums of money. They wanted to rack up welfare bills, bigger deficits and the like. Uh, and, of course, they're the ones now confused about how to respond to all this. What I've said is we've got to run a surplus. We've got to, as a country, be raising more than we spend in good times. And that is uh, what we're doing. Uh, and we're fixing the roof while the sun is shining. Because obviously, and your, I'm sure program is reflecting this today, there's lots of uncertain things happening in the world, in Greece, in China, and the like. And I've been able, in this budget, to get our national debt falling after years of it rising. It's falling every year, falling actually to a lower rate than I previously set out before the general election. But I have been able to smooth the path to that lower debt, and that's a sensible approach. But I don't want anyone to be any, any, any illusions. You know, there are going to be difficult decisions on saving money. Obviously, there have been difficult decisions yesterday on welfare. But in the end, it's about having a country that chooses its priorities. A country's priority is the National Health Service. It's defending itself and its values around the world. It's making sure the working people are supported. And all of that is in the budget.